Hello guys, Small Room Report here. My mission for you today is to give you the most unbiased and hopefully accurate election prediction for US Senate. For the past four years, Democrats have controlled the Senate and right now the map is really bad for Democrats. And so unless a miracle occurs, I think Republicans will be able to flip the Senate even if Kamala wins, which I don't think she'll win against Trump. But starting off, we'll start off with the safe states, pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are the states that Republicans will win, and they'll win comfortably by 12 or more points. West Virginia is a state that historically was Democratic-leaning because the coal workers were aligned towards Democrats, and they were more conservative. But as Democrats started leaning into more social issues, and as they started getting further left on economics, the West Virginia coal workers began voting Republican and began voting Republican by large margins. The last time a Democrat won West Virginia at, on the presidential level was 1996 Bill Clinton. And the last time that West Virginia, the last time a Democrat even won a county in West Virginia at, in the presidential election was Obama 2008. And so the reason why I'm bringing up West Virginia is because right now the uh, former Democratic uh, Senator Joe Manchin who's independent but he caucuses with the Democrats, retired. And so this gives Republicans an easy, safe flip. And the icing on top of the cake is that they have one of the best Senate candidates, Jim Justice, an incredibly popular uh, governor of the state of West Virginia. He'll be able to flip the state very easily and that gives Republicans an automatic seat. Uh, Florida might be controversial, but once again, as I explained in my presidential election video, I think that Florida is not anywhere near as close for the Democrats as polls indicate. I think that Demi, De, Debbie Mukarso Powell or Demi Mukarso Powell is going to lose very comfortably. I think Rick Scott will win by 10 or more points. We'll have to see on election night, but I don't see a world where Democrats uh, flip that seat. I'm putting Texas at lean because I think that Ted Cruz, even though politically speaking, he's one of the he's one of the best senators in my opinion. I think that on a personality level, a lot of people don't like him, like on a personal level, and I think he'll underperform Trump. So it kind of comes down to how Trump does in Texas, which Texas I think will win by like eight or nine points, but. I think Ted Cruz will underperform him by, I don't know, I'm thinking here, like um, two or three points. The money that the Democrat Colin Allred has raised is making it so that this race, not that he'll be able to flip the seat or not that the race is a toss-up, but it's enough to where Ted Cruz's victory is not automatically guaranteed. Uh, Nebraska is a very interesting one because the independent running there seems to be making connections with the voters he's not far behind in terms of the money and the republicans have treated this race very seriously and so i'm putting it at leans i think the republican will win but this race is unusually competitive montana is a state that trump has won big and he won it very easily in 2016 and 2020 but uh the democratic senator there john tester has historically been able to overperform when um, when Democrats are on the ballot, but split ticket voting has gone down. Although I still think he can win this race. Polling, the money situation isn't that bad for Republicans. I do think that Republicans will be able to take this seat by four to five points, and that automatically creates another flip for the Republicans. And then starting off on the Democratic side, I put um, Maryland as likely only because Larry Hogan is running. And although I do think that the Democratic challenger will be able to win comfortably at the end of the day, just Larry Hogan's popularity will be enough to make this race unusually close. There'll be large ticket splitting, but historically speaking, popular governors across both parties running for Senate, that usually doesn't guarantee them a Senate seat and the historical trend has been that the governor can't define political can't defy political gravity because the dynamics are different when you're running for governor people are more likely to put party aside versus Senate it goes more towards party affiliation because each person who represents the state in the Senate 
will also caucus with the Republicans, giving them control of committee assignments and all of that. Virginia, I'm putting in likely because although I think Tim Kaine will be able to win comfortably, more so than Harris, I think that Virginia is going to be close. And the reason I say that is because I think that the rural turnout in Virginia is going to go big for Trump and Republicans, but not big enough for Trump to win the state and not big enough for the Republican challenger to um, beat Tim Kaine. Although I will say the Republican challenger for Tim Kaine is strong. I believe his name is Chow. And from what I've seen, the way he's spoken, he's very articulate and very intelligent. Um, but other than that, the leans races, I think that Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania are leans, particularly Wisconsin and Pennsylvania have strong incumbents, although I've seen the race in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania tied into the point where you can't name it likely. In Michigan, I think that it's closer to likely than it is to leans, but I'm keeping it at leans because I think that the ticket splitting in Michigan will be minimal. Arizona, Kari Lake seems to have been a bad candidate to put up. All the polls show her losing to Ruben Gallego by like six or eight points. But I'm keeping it at leans because I don't think the ticket splitting will be that big. Although in Arizona, it's one of those states where ticket splitting uh, does occur. And like Michigan, it's closer to likely than it is to lean. But just given the dynamics of a presidential race, I'm keeping it at lean. Nevada, I think that even though Trump will win the state on a presidential level, I think the senator there will win comfortably by like three or four points. And in 2022, there was ticket splitting at the Senate level. Um, Democrats, uh, Nevada was able to hold, Democrats were able to hold the Senate seat in Nevada, even though it was remarkably close. And uh, the, Republic the Republicans were able to flip the governor's seat somewhat comfortably. The only toss-up race is Ohio, and I think at the end of the day, based off how Ohio does like to ticket split sometimes, I think given the huge money advantage that Sherry Brown has, given that Mer Bernie Moreno is a so-so candidate, I think at the end of the day, Democrats narrowly hold it, like recount territory. Although with this one, I wouldn't be surprised too much if Republicans flip it. But once again, this is a toss-up, and another point is that I think Republicans will be able to flip the Senate. The only way Democrats can keep the Senate realistically would be for them to pull off a slight upset in Montana, for them to win Ohio comfortably, and that creates a 50-50 map, and that would also require Kamala pulling off a victory, which she can do, but I don't think that's going to happen. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and once again please get out there and vote if you have not already voted.